foothills of the mighty Sierra Nevada, California, lies a valley like no other on Earth, Yosemite, a seven-mile-long, one-mile-wide granite canyon. Here lie some of the most awe-inspiring geological features on the planet. Half Dome, America's most iconic peak. Yosemite Falls, the highest unbroken waterfall on the continent. And El Capitan, one of the biggest sheer cliffs in the world. The Europeans discovered this astonishing valley only 150 years ago. These sheer walls and granite cliffs, high waterfalls, was a marvel to them as it is to us. Ever since it shot to fame, Yosemite has been shrouded in mystery. It's almost as if there was a higher power at work that basically said, that looks really good right about there. And then just put a little bit of grass right there and put some oak, like an oak woodland right through there. And that, that, that's it, that's perfect. Because it doesn't seem like anything was haphazard. It seems like this was designed to overwhelm and to leave people awestruck. Yosemite's unique design has intrigued scientists for centuries. I think when you see something that is this dramatic, you just have questions. And the question is, how did this happen? How did it get monoliths, these huge stone structures that are just rising thousands of feet off the valley floor? How does that come to pass? And for over 100 years, people have been trying to answer that question. The story begins in 1870, when amateur geologist John Muir went hunting for the answer. Founder of the Sierra Club, he funded his obsession with the valley by herding sheep and writing articles about Yosemite. He wrote that no temple made with hands can compare with Yosemite. Muir scoured the landscape for clues as to how this unusual box-shaped canyon formed and came up with a radical, seemingly far-fetched theory. He believed that the world's climate was once extremely different, and the lush canyon where the Merced River flows was filled by a gigantic glacier thousands of feet thick. Muir proposed that as this river of ice slowly flowed downhill over thousands of years, it gouged a deep canyon and sliced vertical cliffs into the granite walls. But that controversial idea brought him into conflict with a fearsome opponent, the admired California state geologist, Professor Josiah Whitney. Josiah Whitney did not have much respect for John Muir because Josiah Whitney was a state geologist. And at that time, John Muir was herding sheep. Certainly he's thinking, what does this man know about this range? How dare he? Whitney believed that this unusually square, steep-sided valley could only have been formed by a sudden, cataclysmic event. He was adamant that giant cracks in the earth caused the valley to pull apart and dramatically sink, cleaving steep cliffs as it fell. This bitter Whitney-Muir conflict raged on for decades, but now scientists are hoping to figure out this complex puzzle once and for all. The first stage of the investigation is to understand how the rocks themselves were created. The canyon is made almost entirely of Yosemite granite, one of the hardest rocks in the world. To understand how this formed, scientists must travel back in time to the beginning. It's 250 million years ago, and the landscape is very different. Dinosaurs roam the land and dominate the skies. An incredibly rare remnant of that time has been discovered northwest of the valley at Mount Hoffman. This patch of softer reddish rock is the oldest in the park. It's sandstone and it once covered the entire region. This rock is very different than most of the rock in Yosemite. It's much darker in color. It's got a different texture. This was originally a sedimentary rock that was deposited in layers. On an ancient shore, sand and sludge compacted together and over millions of years formed this sandstone. This tranquil landscape was transformed by an earth-shattering event deep below the surface and the evidence lies here in the rock. Here we have this older 
layered sedimentary rock. You can see that many layers and banding, which continues across over into here. But strangely, this section of granite has cut right through the sedimentary rock and split this section in two. How this unusual rock formation formed can be explained by a simple experiment using sand and wax. This red wax here represents granite. The sand represents sedimentary rock. And right now I'm heating it to see what's gonna happen when the wax melts. Actually, I start to hear some, oh, here it goes. We're actually getting a little bit of the wax pushing up through the sand and the molten wax is lighter and so it's pushing its way up through the sand which represents the sedimentary rock. Yep, there's some more. It proves the only way granite could have cut through this sandstone is if it was originally molten and able to flow like a liquid. Molten rock forms deep within the earth, rises up through the crust, in this case, forced its way through a crack, expanding it open, and then cooling and solidifying to form this band of granite. This band of granite tells scientists that Yosemite's cliffs were once molten and heated to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. 95% of the rock in Yosemite is granite. And I can see with the naked eye all the crystals in here. They're fairly large, and that tells me that this rock cooled very slowly. Scientists were now on the hunt for what was generating all this molten rock. The investigation led them to Mount Gibbs, another unusually colored mountain in the northern reaches of the park. It lies above a layer of granite and is made from reddish gray rock. Strangely, these rocks were also once molten. Here I have a rock from Mount Gibbs, and I can see that most of the crystals are very, very small. Most of them I can't even see. These small crystals tell an incredible story. When molten rock cools quickly in the open air, crystals don't have time to grow. And what that tells me is that this is a volcanic rock that was spewed out at the surface. It is 200 million years ago. Volcanoes shatter the tranquil west coast. The earth explodes with molten rock. For the next 100 million years, lava pours thick and fast onto the land, covering the sandstone in volcanic rock 10,000 feet high. It stretches for 400 miles along the coast. North America's greatest mountain chain, the mighty Sierra Nevada, is forming, and the area that would become Yosemite is caught right in the middle of it. But some of this rising molten rock never makes it to the surface. Trapped beneath the blanket of mountains, it cools slowly, creating a giant chamber full of solidifying granite two miles below the surface. 400 miles long, 60 miles wide, and five miles deep, it stretches along the entire spine of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Yosemite's immense granite monoliths were forged in a fiery furnace two miles below ground. A hundred million years ago, I would have been standing in a vast chamber of molten rock with rock rising thousands of feet above me. Scientists investigating how the rocks at Yosemite formed have found bands of granite, evidence Yosemite's rocks were once molten, and volcanic rocks, proof that the granite formed deep beneath the earth. But scientists were still mystified. Yosemite granite is so strong, it's unlike granite anywhere else on earth. For hundreds of years, they tried to solve the mystery while the answer was actually staring them in the face. 250 million years ago, Yosemite's landscape was a peaceful coastal plain. Now the investigation moves to 100 million years ago. The land that would become Yosemite is in turmoil. Volcanoes dot the skyline, spilling mountains of lava onto the land. And entombed beneath two miles of volcanic rock lies Yosemite's molten granite. The next 10 million years is a critical period for the rocks of Yosemite. 
Something unique is happening to the granite, making it tough enough to hold up cliffs 3,000 feet high. The search for the secret of Yosemite granite's immense strength led scientists to the biggest steep-sided granite block in the world, the mighty El Capitan. Twice the height of the Empire State Building, over three billion cubic feet of rock rises into the air. El Capitan is the largest granite monolith in Yosemite National Park. 3,000 feet of pure granite. It's one of the biggest cliffs in the world. When I look up at something like this, I really want to hang onto the rock because I feel like I'm going to fall backwards with vertigo. Amazing. El Capitan is the ultimate big wall climb. Once considered impossible to conquer, it's a treacherous ascent up a vertical, near featureless rock face with only a handful of roots to the summit. Sheer granite walls are normally unstable and over time get pulled down by erosion. So it was a mystery how rocks could hold up cliffs this big. Scientists are sampling the rocks to find out but the Yosemite granite doesn't give in without a fight. Whew. These Yosemite granites are really hard. You can work up quite a sweat trying to collect a bag full of this stuff. Buried within this rock is the secret to Yosemite granite's success. Oh, finally. Well, one clue to why these rocks are so tough is given by this sample right here. These are really large crystals. Large crystals make a rock really strong. They kind of weld together and they're flawless and they give a rock a lot of strength. But it was a mystery how these tough crystals got so large and created such flawless rocks. This is in contrast to normal granite, which, when it cools, forms a hard rock with a fatal flaw. Riddled with cracks, these rocks are vulnerable to erosion. If you take anything and it's very hot and you cool it quickly, it'll shatter. In granite bodies that cool quickly and form a lot of cracks that weaken the rock body and make it unable to support 3,000 foot cliffs. If you walk up to a typical granite and look at it, you'll find cracks a foot apart, two feet apart. You walk up to El Capitan, you might have to go 100 feet or more between cracks in the rock. Clearly, something different happened here 100 million years ago. El Capitan is really just one large, uniform, essentially faultless piece of granite, and that makes it very difficult for erosion to deal with. For many years, it was a puzzle what had caused Yosemite granite to form so differently. But the secret had been staring scientists in the face. One of the things you can see is a clue as to how this landscape formed in that dark diagonal splotch. That's called the North American